Good evening and welcome to the Job Search Solution the radio program where we talk about looking for a job, changing jobs, changing careers, hiring. And as always, we begin with a prayer. Dear God, grant us thy peace and thy mercy. Thy will be done. I wrote a blog the other day about the 30 second or the 30 minute debacle. And it had to do with at least three, looking back on it five times in the last month, I have had candidates that got as far as the uh, either vice president of sales or CEO, CEO in three cases. And they were relegated to an interview with the CEO. Uh, and it was going to be via some kind of video conferencing. And because of what they all call time constraint, they set these things up for 30 minutes. Well, in all the years I've been doing this, I should have known better than that. And the bottom line was every one of them to only go for 30 minutes was a debacle. First of all, it's hard to have an interview in only 30 minutes. Uh, every one of them went over the 30 minutes. Uh, the people that were running the, um, the video, the CEOs and the vice presidents were in a big hurry under a time crunch. They got down to the end of the situation, end of the interview, and one of them just ended right in the middle of a sentence uh, on the part of a CEO. He never did ask very much about the candidate. And this is going to be a, a more prominent thing, especially with video interviews. For some reason, we have this, I, we, psychologically, uh, uh, we have an idea that videos should be could be shorter than in-person interviews. Uh, you can go to the blog and read about how these things came about. But what I wanted to discuss this evening is something really, really, really important that if you get relegated to one of these situations, you're going to have to um, see what you can do to change it. First of all, I would try to never agree to something for only 30 minutes. You've never had an in-person interview for only 30 minutes, unless, of course, you weren't going to become a candidate anymore and you got eliminated right then. But nobody ever interviews for just 30 minutes when you're face to face. So therefore, you should always pitch for the idea of I need at least an hour because I know it's going to take that long for us to get it done. If the people that you're talking to insist that it's only going to be a 30 minute interview, then you need to be prepared and you need to approach this differently than you would a lot of interviews. And what I suggest you do is that, first of all, you got to realize that most of the times these 30 minute interviews are third, fourth, and fifth interviews with a company. You've already passed through a number of other interviews in order to get there. So these people you're going to be told are really just kicking the tires. They're just putting their blessing on it. Uh, they really don't mean anything is what you're going to be told, that they don't have much of a say in it. Don't you dare believe it. If they couldn't say no, they wouldn't be in the interviewing process. You got to remember that everybody you talk to has the ability to say no regarding your candidacy. And here's what's most important. You need to prepare a presentation on yourself in the very beginning of the interview by saying something along this line. In speaking with all of the other people that I've spoken to, and then I would name the people that I've spoken to, here are the reasons I think you should hire me. I've done this in the past, I've accomplished this in the past, and then go through very briefly a three or four no more three or four minute presentation of yourself, what you've done, how you've done it, how you were successful at it, why you were successful at it, and hit all of the highlights. And then spend four or five maybe minutes doing that at the most, and then open it up to questions. Because what's happened in all of these things that I've seen over the last few months is that the CEO or whoever it is starts asking a question, just a bunch of questions, like they were in a normal conversation. 
And then they come down to the end of the interview. They see that the 30 minutes is almost up and they haven't asked anywhere near the number of questions that they need to. They don't know anywhere near enough about you, uh, about the candidate to know what they're doing. And the thing ends in a disaster, especially if it's only for 30 minutes because they get to that 30 minute mark. They realize they are only about partway through the interview. And then they say, well, I got to go to another meeting. Thanks for your time. And then they end it. And inevitably, they report back to whoever they're reporting back to uh, that they didn't care for the candidate that much because they didn't know why you should get hired. So the point is you need to take control of those 30-minute interviews. And you need to start out with features, advantages, and benefits what you've learned from the other people that you've talked to, what the company needs and how you are going to fulfill that need and how you're going to do it better than anybody else they could talk to. And if you do that in the very beginning, you set the stage for the hiring authority understanding or the CEO or whoever is interviewing you, you have set the stage for them having a foundation of what you've done and how you've done it and who you've done it for and what you can do for them that the others can't. Just remember that these 30 minute, even one hour video interviews are not the same thing as a face-to-face -face in-person interview. They're not, and you need to adjust to that. And that, in my opinion, is what I found to be the best way for a candidate to be able to do that in an interview. All right, thank you all for listening. Stay tuned. This is Tony Beshear with the Job Search Solution.